All right, so here we are. We are talking about yet another one of these ideas that has popped up. And this one, honestly, I kind of like the most in comparison to all the other ones that we have seen. So once again, we are heading over onto sportsnet.ca and talking about this piece made by Ryan Dixon from last week. Four Mitch Marner trades that the Toronto Maple Leafs could consider. This, of course, is talking about the Leafs and their entire trading Mitch Marner saga, which has kind of taken over the hockey world in the past little bit. Last time we had talked about the Marner for Markstrom conversation, but in this video, I wanted to go over one of these other ideas that Dixon proposes, because this one, I think, is maybe the funnest one. Take a look at this trade proposal between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Seattle Kraken. The Kraken would get Mitch Marner, and the Toronto Maple Leafs would get Shane Wright and Adam Larson. Now, when you think about this trade idea right now, just in terms of value for value, what the team has and what they're giving up, the Toronto Maple Leafs would be losing this trade pretty badly. If you want to go by just, okay, what do these players offer today in 2024, 2025, what can they bring to their teams? Mitch Marner, of course, is a 100-point caliber guy. Adam Larson is a shot-blocking, minutes-eating right-handed defenseman. And Shane Wright is, well, he's Shane Wright. We'll expand more as the video goes on. But when it comes to this trade, this would be ultimately a move of potential. The Toronto Maple Leafs sacrificing what they have on their roster right now for an immediate upgrade on defense, because Adam Larson, I'd say, is a pretty good player. I mean, last year he had 18 points, a far cry from his 33 points he had in 22-23. But, as we had said, he was a bona fide top four guy, had 20 minutes a night, he would block a lot of shots, and he ultimately was a very important part of the Seattle Kraken's defense core. And for Shane Wright in particular, this is a guy who... Honestly, if he gets thrusted into the Toronto spotlight, who knows how exactly that's going to influence the way he continues to progress. Because Shane Wright, as everybody kind of knows, was supposed to be the first overall pick in the 2022 NHL draft. He slipped all the way to fourth overall. Slavkovsky, Cooley, and Nemich were all taken in front of him, and he went through a really strange development process the next year. He played with the Coachella Valley Firebirds, he played with the Windsor Spitfires, he played with the Kraken, he played for Team Canada at the World Juniors, he was all over the place. But things kind of settled down in his season in 23-24, where he had 47 points in 59 AHL games and 5 points in 8 games in the regular regular Seattle Kraken lineup. Shane Wright is getting better, it's just with all the expectations of being a first overall pick and not making the Kraken right away, there are some that may say that Shane Wright's having a difficult time living up to the potential that people thought he had. And while I do think that he still can become an 80-90 point player at the NHL level, a first line bona fide center, that's far from guaranteed at this point. I think a lot of people thought it was more of a guarantee, let's say two years ago when he was drafted. With that in mind, though, let's go back over to this article and talk about Marner for Wright and Larson. Why Toronto does it? Adam Larson is a large right-shot defenseman who logs significant minutes. He turns 32 in November and is eligible to become a UFA after next season, so you'd certainly hope to extend him three years beyond that. Wright, however, has been through it. The Toronto area kid was projected to go first overall, but then he fell to number four. His development has been hindered by pandemics, trades, bouncing between leagues, etc., but last year he spent more or less the entire winter in the AHL and looked good when he joined Seattle for the final days of the schedule and notched four goals in five games. It sure seems like the righty has a future as a reliable 2C, and he's on an ELC for the next two seasons. Now, here is why the Seattle Kraken would do it. They've already fired a coach, so Seattle is obviously itching for more. Their squad has the framework in place, but lacks high-end talent. Marner adds a serious dose of just that. So again, it's one of these future-for-now kind of arguments. If the Toronto Maple Leafs cared a little bit more about their future, then trading away Marner for right would make sense in that regard, and adding Adam Larson on top of that helps out their present at the moment, too. And for Seattle, if they really wanted to take that next step, if they felt that some of the other guys in their system were ready to progress forward, you still have Jamie Oleksiak, who is also a big shot-blocking, minutes-eating monster for the Kraken. And if you think some of your other defensive prospects, like a Lucas Dragasevich, for example, is ready to make that jump, then maybe you think about trading away a guy like Larson. Honestly, he's so important to the Kraken that I wouldn't be surprised if the Kraken just said absolutely not, but if it's Mitch Marner coming back the other way, I mean, think about that, eh? Marner and McCann playing together. 
It's almost like we could have seen that in real life already, to be honest. But I digress, all joking aside here. The biggest thing that I'm thinking about with this trade idea is the idea of right in Toronto. Would it not be so poetic and so kind of fan service-y to have Wright and Slavkovsky playing in the same division? facing off against each other over and over again? Wright versus Slavkovsky, Wright versus Slavkovsky. That was the entire thing two years ago, and if you have both of these guys playing off against each other, it provides a lot of fuel for that rivalry, would it not? I mean, I remember back in 2016, you know, the big games were always Edmonton versus Buffalo because McDavid versus Eichel, McDavid versus Eichel, same thing the next year, Patrick Laine versus Austin Matthews. I get it, Wright didn't go second overall, but nobody's putting Slavkovsky up against Simon Nemish considering these guys are really good friends and they also were kind of surprise picks in their first and second overall spots, not gonna lie. But Wright and Slavkovsky... Oh baby, that is the pairing there. And if Shane Wright is able to expand on the limited stint he had had in the NHL this previous season, if he is still a, let's say, 40 or 50 point caliber NHL pace guy in 82 games at 20 years old, that could be a really beneficial piece for the Toronto Maple Leafs. You have Austin Matthews, who is already a franchise generational borderline even goal scorer in the NHL. Shane Wright had all the tools to become that, but with a little bit more of a cerebral style of play. And for Shane Wright, if you want to talk about playoffs, I mean, Wright in the sample that he had this season with Coachella Valley had two points in four games. Not the best you could say, but he still went out there and produced. But there still is value there as a younger guy who is transitioning into the NHL. Adam Larson just adds another level of stability to that defense, and realistically, I mean, the Leafs are always trying to trade for big defensemen who block shots, so getting a guy like Larson, who has been one of the better ones at doing that the past few years, certainly would help out. It's just whether or not Marner is the right guy to get that done. If you really do believe in Shane Wright, I can see this trade going through. If you absolutely feel that he is going to be that guy, then fine. But just taking a look at the on-ice product today, I don't think Shane Wright moves the needle enough to be one of the main pieces in a Marner trade, nor does Adam Larson do that either, so I don't see a kind of trade like this going through. I feel like the Leafs would want more stability and guaranteed potential for their hockey club in 24-25, since at this point, I mean, everybody's kind of saying it, right? The Leafs have to explore all options. They want to remain competitive. They want to still be able to capitalize on Matthews and Nylander being in their primes or whatever. Shane Wright helps, but does he help as much as some of the other pieces that Marner could fetch on the trade market? Also, the salary being freed up here, too, is something we haven't even talked about this entire time. Shane Wright is on his ELC. Meanwhile, Adam Larson is making his $4 million a year to the end of next season. That's a lot of cap savings the Leafs would have. Is that enough to go out there and maybe get a Stamkos or something in free agency? Or somebody else, a big name, to come over to this team? If you think about it like that, the trade essentially is Marner for Wright, Adam Larson, and whomever else it is you can sign. Does that make it a little bit better? Honestly, I kind of think about it more if that's the case, but you would have to go in with the assumption that Toronto Maple Leafs would use that dollar amount to get somebody of value on the market. But either way, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Shane Wright and Adam Larson trade idea for Mitch Marner between the Seattle Kraken and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Do you think this is actually something that could go through? Do you like this idea for either team? If you're a fan of the Kraken, what are your opinions on acquiring Marner? If you're a fan of the Leafs, my question to you is, is this trade package enough? Is Shane Wright and Adam Larson a good enough deal for you to say yes to in a Marner trade? The salary certainly does help out the Toronto Maple Leafs in this deal, but you could debate you're not getting as much value for your team in the now. So let me know your thoughts in the comments, where exactly that weighs on the scale, in your opinion. Thoughts in the comments section below, I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.